a, a machine can learn to a point where it can behave autonomously without our trigger. I think some of the founders of the AI technology are concerned that in its application, it could be destructive. And that you, you cannot keep giving those vast amounts of data to a system that cannot be controlled. So there's a, a fear. I, I don't know whether those fears are founded. Well, uh, I, I don't know also. Um, but I think the fears may be overblown because I don't know any engineer who would consciously, deliberately build something that will control him. So it's not likely from the human morals point of view, ethics related things, that folks will do that. Mm -hmm. okay. On the other hand, I can understand accidents. Good. Okay. And uh, we must safeguard what we do with respect to accidents. Mm -hmm. okay. So normally, I will not make you totally autonomous. I'll make you such like that if I decide I don't want you to be autonomous, I'll stop you. The same way if my machine is misbehaving, I pull the plug. So we need to strengthen our efforts in, in control of, of such devices and also in preventing them from doing things that you have not asked them to do. Meaning the specification of their behavior, we need to tighten how we go about, about doing those things. Now, the risks are there, mm. but the same way, the risks with anything. I mean, mm. knives always hurt people, but you, you supplement, train people how to use the knife, and then give them ethics. You cannot use the knife except under certain conditions. And if you are so, it's the same thing. Same thing. So we just have to get a little bit faster because he's learning faster. <laughs> uh, meaning, as he collects more data, and he's also only as good as the data he has read. Eh? So that's why we often say they are biased because whoever created it was not in Ghana. Yeah. He did not use Ghana data to train it. He used whatever data he can find globally which usually does not have sufficient content of <laughs> Ghana yeah. information. Yeah. So he'll be biased. Yeah. Even in recognizing pictures, you should expect him to be biased because he has not been trained sufficiently with them. So those challenges are there. However, I think what it says is that we should become more involved on the supply side. Right now, we are very, very active. The same with the internet. We are very active with the use, but we're not so good in the supply side. And that's where we will suffer because you feel like for a country to really use technology to free itself, it, it must not just be a consumer, it must be a creator and a supplier. What's the missing thing? Is it educational institutions or is it money? Because you're training people in computer science, training people in all this uh, coding and stuff. What's the missing link? Uh, maybe it's not yet become a priority for mm. policy authority, mm. Um, not only at the governor's uh, level, maybe even at the institutional level. Mm. Um, so that kind of awareness uh, will help. Uh, you know, because what tends to happen is, um, you know, we just like to have it. Mm. And want to go very fast. Huh? You want your country to become, you know, technology heavy, right? So you just start to use, encourage everybody to use. But that also backfires. Because policies you make out of those situations are usually not very robust. Because it's likely from the user perspective. Mm. And then you have not had chance to build your capacity, uh, technical capacity to be able to replace mm. these technologies. So you become really, to some extent, captured. Mm. Uh, if you start using certain kinds of um, international tools, then you use those tools forever. But if you were to use more open source tools, uh, or develop your own contributions to open source, uh, you might be able to recreate something. So you need to find a balance of the proprietary tools versus the open source things that you might have created yourselves. And we should encourage uh, our youth to be doing more hard development than... Are you involved in any training these days? Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I have a class of over 300 students. That you still teach? That I still teach, yes. Computer science. I still teach computer science. I'm probably one of your best programmers alive today. Still? Yeah. You have not been overtaken by the youth? No, we teach them. <laughs> no, no. So you are actively, you are an active programmer. I'm an active programmer. I will program Python with them the same way they will program. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's impressive. 
Because I, I think you're in your 70s, aren't you? Yes, I'm 76. But if I were a surgeon, would you not come to my... I would probably come to you more. Oh, you see? Because of the experience. Uh, you see? So it's the same thing? Same thing. Wow. Same thing. You're, you're doing hackathons. <laughs> oh, we do hackathons. And you judge them? Oh, well, yeah, we judge them. Mm. We judge them. And sometimes we give them hints. Mm. Because many of the things they are, they are struggling with today, mm, yeah. we have seen them before. I see. Yes. And what has made them, uh, let's say, uh, useful now is we've got more memory than we had before. Because we didn't have enough memory, we didn't ad address those issues. Now that you have some memory and some disk and fast enough computes, you're able to address those problems. Now, mm. we knew them. We knew the problems. Mm. But we didn't have the memory. We didn't have the computes. Yeah. And so we couldn't actually address them. But we knew they were problems. Mm. Oh, yeah. Interesting. So that means that that knowledge can actually help a new guy who is learning about caching. Mm. You know, uh, that, oh, no, you can do cash replacement. You can mm. do right through. You can do this. You can, we can help them with those things. So this summit is happening in Ghana. Is it open to the public? Tell me a bit about it. The Africa Internet Summit. Um, is it an invitation only summit? What's the oh, venue? Do you have any more details? No, no, yeah, yeah, I can give. The venue is um, Alisa Hotel. Okay. Um, yeah, anyone can watch online free. So it's to stream online? Yeah, it will be streamed online and it's free. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I believe that if you are coming to spend in a hotel, yeah. the hotel will charge us. So obviously, if you are coming to participate physically, physically there's a registration there will be fee. some registration fee and so mm -hmm. on. Um, now, but it's five days. Okay. The first day actually has very interesting uh, uh, opening remarks of sorts. Mm -hmm. This is the 29th? The 29th. 29th, in the morning, we would like to showcase what Ghana has been able to do with, with a 30th anniversary discussion and so on. And uh, we expect the minister to open it mm -hmm. and then also folks from the ministry to tell us the journey, the policy journey they've been on, and then also someone narrate the history of the internet and so on, and then have a round table. Wonderful. In fact, we would like someone like you to... Monitor, to be there. To, yeah. I'll be happy to be there. So yeah. that's on the 29th. That's on the tw in the morning. Good. Then in the afternoon, we now have the international opening. Great. In the international opening, uh, mm -hmm. we, have, we want to start with a UN Under Secretary General for Technology mm -hmm. um, or his delegate to say some things to us. Then we have the inventor of the internet himself, globally, Vint Seth, to also say some things. Mm -hmm. Then we have um, the Secretary General of the uh, uh, World Internet Conference out of China to also say some things. Mm -hmm. Then we have Inter Internet Society CEO to also, uh, and then ICANN CEO, and then even the Minister of Information from Mauritius, because our last event was in Mauritius. So, so you are bringing the whole of Africa to Ghana? <laughs> yes. And the global who participate with us will all come. Wow. And then, interestingly, uh, a lot of folks from the Sahel participate in our activities. So we have the special envoy uh, for the Sahel also with convincing to come say a few words so that we can uh, support them as well. And then the rest will be the, you know, the host. The host is NCA uh, with Ghana.com to also say some things, but, and then connectivity provider. So that will be like the beginning. And of course, we hope that uh, Honorable uh, Minister Sam George will be able to grace the occasion. Maybe if we are fortunate, he might come with a special guest of honor to help us wow. open it to that, that, that level. Sounds really good. So 29th, 30th, 31st, 1st, yes. 2nd yes. and 3rd, that whole week. That whole week. African Internet Summit, powered yes. by NCA yes. and, uh, of course, your company. Um, I need to mention that Prof has won a number of awards. So he's been recognized for his uh, numerous contributions to the development of internet. For example, in 2007, he was given the Jonathan B. Poster. Postal Service Award by the Internet Society for his monumental contributions to internet development in Africa. He was also inducted into the Internet Hall of Fame in 2013 by the Internet Society, cementing his status as a global internet pioneer. And in 2023, just recently, he won the Roland Berger Human Dignity Award, recognizing him for his work in bridging the digital divide and advocating for digital rights in Africa. What future do you see for Ghana using technology? 
how can technology unlock the future? Just talk to me about what, when you look in the crystal ball, 30 years from today, 2055, um, what do you see? Will Ghana be competitive globally? Will internet be at the center of what we do? Okay. If with internet, we can't see more than three years. For you. <laughs> <laughs> that is too long. <laughs> but, but no, I, I, you know, I, I would... I'll use the 30 years we've seen mm. where we've gone from practically nothing mm. to where we are. Mm. Um, for me, I think as we recognize we are becoming more and more dependent on digital things mm -hmm. um, that we invest cons commensurately, but not on the use side, mm -hmm. but on the on supply, the supply side. side. Because if we don't, we'll just end up being a user. And, uh, and, and that results in capital flight. I don't know yes. if you guys are observing that, yeah. but every time we host things outside, it means every month some dollars are going. Whether you have it or not, you've got to find it. So it's important that we do some level of import substitutions, yes. and it has to be done deliberately, and it cannot really be done outside, in my opinion, the universities, because most of these, today's IT people are producing the universities. Yes. There are some people who are naturally talented mm -hmm. that can make it by themselves. But by and large, you need some formal rigorous training. And so we should pay attention to that. Mm. Now, there are the things that give you quick return uh, uh, create uses, but it does not create uh, the ones who supply. Okay? And then, uh, you know, with that, then you also have to create an industry, okay. which means that, you know, government or those with resources should deliberately invest in the private sector saying i'm not going to give this job to outside i want to make sure that people in here are able to do it and then encourage some of them by whatever means you can uh, to also invest you know in it and the government investment will be to buy their services i mean if you are we're all buying uh, you know an mtn and the MTN is in Ghana, and all the funds are remaining in Ghana, I think we'll be very, very well off. So that's one thing I can see as, what, first, recognize that you are dependent on it. Your economy is dependent on it. And if that is the case, then you should treasure it. And the, work, the real workhorse there are the, the engineers and so on. And you know, strangely, it, when I talk engineers, I don't mean professional engineers. Eh? What I mean is that sometimes they are, they are economists <laughs> who behave like the mm. kind of engineer I'm talking about. I Meaning he understands enough to begin mm. to raise questions as to why can't I replace this okay. and then have that. So they become like a technical community alongside the engineers mm. and then they help take the products out and they help define the products and so on and so forth. Wonderful, Prof. Thank you. Okay. Prof. Zanina Kukweno is a pioneer uh, of the internet in Ghana and we're celebrating 30 years of that this whole month of September, and we've been talking to him ahead of the Africa Internet Summit scheduled for 29th of this month to the 3rd of October at Alisa Hotel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.